Electric Meron. Like I said before, we will be interacting with the expatriate community as well as some African societies or African communities. We've been interviewing them, asking them about how living here, what they do, as well as uh, some kind of a motivational message that they have for people who are, who also intend to move here. So today we have uh, with us uh, Meron from Ethiopia. Meron, uh, good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Kaiser. Yeah. So, what motivated you to move to Czech? Okay, kind of thank you for giving me this chance first of all. So, uh, the first thing I came to Czech Republic that is for studies. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I was looking for some scholarship to do my master's degree. Then I found the Czech government scholarship and I applied for that and I came to study my master's degree in Czech language. Which school? Uh, when you came from Ethiopia, you will not choose the school, you just have some like rough decision for the studies, just ah, master's. Okay. Then when you came here, you start with the language studies first, preparatory language studies for one year. Okay. Then after, during that time, you choose the university. Okay, so it means that uh, <laughs> it's like a, in a like, Generally, you only study masters. Yeah. So uh, you are uh, like a, you, you you are not at uh, maybe you are not limited to choose a, a school where else you are in Ethiopia. So when you get here, because you intend to study in Czech language. Yeah. So then you study Czech language for how many months? Nine months. Nine months. Yeah. So af so after that you make you choose a school. Yeah. You know the decision for your studies is just like general decision. Like for example, if you plan to study medicine. Mm -hmm. If you plan to study social sciences like economics, informatics, or if you like draft decisions only you have, and there are some language schools. So, for example, if you want to study uh, medicine or uh, food, food mm, there is another one technology. Mm -hmm. So, you will go to Mariansky uh, language class school, and if you plan to study economics and informatics some uh, social related things you will go to another school so it's just rough decision when you came then during your language studies it's for preparation for your studies so uh, if you are planning for example to study informatics you will have Czech language maths and uh, IT also in Czech language then it, like it's just for preparing for your studies uh -huh. so when you came you just have rough plan not exactly you will not choose the university your field of studies you just have rough decision but for some students of course they will decide for example if you plan to study medicine you have to have that decision yeah. yeah okay so since now we we are just uh, in the intro when you started telling us that you intend you came to study yeah. so if you can take us through the preparation, how the uh, uh, scholarship application is done, because back in Ethiopia, you know, I know that some people will be watching, or people from Ethiopia and other countries will be watching. Mm -hmm. uh, how was the like uh, the application process? How was it done? Like, uh, is it that uh, all of a sudden uh, you need to apply to uh, like a Czech institution, or you need to apply to the school, or how was it? How's the process? And also the application process, how was it done? Yeah. So if it is in Czech language, for for example. If my pass was like uh, you will fill the government scholarship most of the time they will open the registration in august uh, from july july august this time so it's a check quota check government quota yeah check government scholarship okay if you just search with this you can find the link then you start a registration application so you'll fill the form in that it may ask you for your studies in english in masters bachelor or phd so and uh, you will choose also the language in english or in czech then even you there is an option that you can op choose the university as well okay. um, so for me when i came i plan to study economics because my bachelor was in, in economics so i plan to continue the economics um, degree then I chose uh, just random university, but economics and management in master's degree. So you will fill this, all the form, then when you are selected, 
so you, you will be invited for interview at the embassies. Okay. Then after that, yeah, even during that interview, you just explain what motivates you, why you plan to study in Czech Republic, these kind of questions. Okay. Then after that interview, um, if you are selected after the interview, then you will, uh, you will be asked to provide some documents. Ah, okay. Yeah, so then that is before you get your uh, certification and everything. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they will ask you yeah, some of the bachelor degrees or high school certifications. And diplomas. Yes, yeah. diplomas like that. Um, th after you provide the, uh, these documents, then they will process it, then you will get the visa and uh, schedule to come to Czech Republic. So, for my case, since my studies was in Czech language, so I have to fill all the steps. Then, at the beginning, we have to go to language school. Uh -huh. So, as I told you, my plan was to study economics and management, so I went to Podavrady, Charles University. Charles University. Yeah, Charles University, which is in Podavrady. So, during that time, we studied maths, geography, economics, and Czech language also for the preparation for my studies. Then, during that time, you know, I changed my plan to study not economics and management to study informatics. Informatics, okay. So at least uh, <laughs> another decision came when you decided to, like when in the process of study you decided to switch. Yeah. Okay. Ah, so, so why did you study informatics? Uh, which school? Um, I studied informatics actually after the language school, so uh, I decided not to continue my studies in Czech language because a master's studies needs a lot of projects and a yeah. lot of hard, hard works and the language skill that I had during that time was not enough to continue with that, so I make a decision not to continue with Czech language and to continue another topic, informatics. So I studied my master's degree in informatics at Czech University of Life Science. Ah, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, that's actually the school that I also uh, completed. Yeah. I see. So <laughs> now we are done. Uh, so now let's look at uh, being here when you came to uh, from Ethiopia to what do you call it, the Czech Republic in Podibradi? What, like, was it like a, uh, was it not like a huge change in the culture, in the, what do you call it, uh, also environment, like almost everything? Yes. And then how did you f manage to adjust to? Yeah, it was totally different, and in the beginning it was a shock, seriously. <laughs> Literally, you can't explain like that, because I grew up in Ethiopia, in the capital Addis Ababa, so mm -hmm. it's a social, socialized city and we have a really warm society and uh, the weather is also really nice. So, and coming from that place to Czech Republic and to a small town in Czech Republic, it's totally different. Uh, so in the beginning, when I came, it was September, even that time it was cold for me. Yeah. yeah, but that's good in average temperature. Now I realize that after a few years. But in the <laughs> beginning it was cold, and I was yeah, saying it's it. cold, it's cold. Then I, I made some friends who, who have been here for years. Then they were telling me, oh no, this is not cold. And then I was really scared of, about the winter. And even the society is really calm. Like it's hard even to interact with the society. Yeah. The culture is totally different. Actually, I came with my sister. That helped me a lot. Just, of course, yeah. yeah. I didn't feel being alone, but like leaving your family and your friends, all that society, and came up, and it's hard to interact with the society because you have to speak the language as well. So the first year it was really challenging. Yeah, it was really challenging. You have to know in the language to interact come up with the society even to ask some for some help you have mm -hmm. to have some knowledge of the language and without that the first few weeks especially it was really challenging I because I have a lot of friends from church uh, even uh, like we have community Ethiopian community mm -hmm. and uh, also we have some Bible study groups also in Ethiopians only I have friends Ethiopians and many other countries also Czechs also from church, so mm, yes, of course, uh, we will meet for holidays. 
So mm -hmm. we have different calendars. So even we celebrate with Gregorian calendar uh, holidays. Uh, Ethiopian calendars. And so, we have, <laughs> so we will celebrate New Year, Christmas, and Easter twice, always in a year. So, uh, so we will ha we try to incorporate with the culture as well. And I love coffee, so I yeah. I love to invite everybody for Ethiopian coffee. And Actually, fish. it is and, good. Yeah, and push to uh, for addiction for coffee addiction as well. So yeah, I think now I'm in a position that I was back home. Like I have a good social life, life now, yeah. nowadays. Yeah, yeah. that's actually good because. Uh, to enjoy a society, you need to have community, yeah. and this community do help you a lot because you get they like help you to adjust to life. Yeah. Once as you know, back home we you may have a lot of like friends and family, and then if you are in another country that you don't have such society, it like community it makes it difficult for you to adjust. And you know, sometimes that a problem shared is half solved, even if you have something to talk about, and you. I meet you and I talk about I talk I talk with like I talk with you you know and yeah. then discuss. Yeah. You are you are able to even to help to comfort me or tell me something that will make me make it comforting. Even if you are unable to even say something, but at least you have been able to get it out of my chest. Yeah. That is why we say problem so like shit is half so yeah. at least it helps a lot. That's good. And today you were telling me another philosophy of. Uh, you know, okay. <laughs> the, the, I don't know. I'll call it the the, the, the gossip yes. the, the gossip coffee. No, so, it's coffee ceremony. But coffee it's, ceremony. Yeah. Of course, people sitting down and it, what you really said is true yeah. because I never thought of that. Yeah. Because you know, when women meet or people usually meet and then you sit, you discuss about problems, about household issues. Okay, so uh, Mara, how do you balance uh, your life or like living here, the relationship you have here, uh, and as well as <laughs> back home, because it's, it's a challenge. When you look at it, you're living here with like, okay, few friends or also some sisters, one or two guys here. And then what about the friends at home? How do you balance your like you know, life here as well as the life back home? Actually, this is a bit challenging for me. So, you know, with family, still, you can't keep the yeah. relationship, of course. Uh, I try to wait for a visit yeah, once in a year. I try to make that in that way until now. Mm, but with friends also, I try to keep some of my relationships. Social media. Yeah, with <laughs> social media, with you know, Messenger or Telegram. You try to call. Uh -huh. um, and uh, yeah, so you try, but you know, nowadays everybody is busy running out of time, so it's not that much. And I guess it's also one thing like, you know, when you look at it, uh, it's one, one thing like it's quite kind of a bit challenging because, you know, the more you are away from the friend for some time, yeah. that uh, friendship be uh, begin to become like, it's not like it become, begin to become more thinner because the person is making new friends yeah. because you're in your absence. So, and then you are also out, like not close to the person. So you are likely to also lose some friends sometimes yeah. because you, you cannot communicate, you cannot be in touch with the person like almost every time, like if you're back home. Yeah. And then I think also when you are also here, you also make new friends. Yeah. So the more, like you keep on making more, like more friends here, yeah. then you keep on losing some friends at home. Yeah, yeah the same thing that, that happens for me as well. I'm just shifting from Ethiopia to Czech Republic. I have a lot of friends here, a lot of society or community here with church, with Ethiopian community. I have a lot of friends <laughs> with office. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, back home, yeah, as you said, it's within a time, it's being, you start losing them well, step by step. But still, I have some friends that I keep. It's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so, what uh, advice would you give to someone who maybe intend to relocate as an expert or maybe to study or any, like, what advice would you give to that person? Okay, I think what I made a mistake was maybe somebody can learn from me, like, uh, I didn't have enough information. Yeah. Like, I, I know someone who was studying here, he gave me some, other, uh, some information that actually basic things. But like when I check some other people here, they just check, try to connect even 
uh, with someone who is living here, who is studying or working here, you know, because mm -hmm. of this social media as now it is. Uh, so I think it's good if we, uh, some, if you know somebody who is living yeah. here and has some information like what you have to be prepared. Like prepare, yeah. yeah, because yeah. you need to have some kind of uh, first-hand information at least, you know, and also you need to start psych your mind because and you need a lot of information about that country because that is a, an environment you want to settle in. Yeah. So if you lack a lot of information, you have difficulty in settling and you also have difficulty even in integrating that at the same time. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, actually, as I told you when I came, so we came with this government scholarship program, so the scholarship package, package yeah, or yeah, the school, they were helping a lot even during visa application, something like that, with doctor visits, everything. Um, but, you know, when you came directly, especially when you are, when you came without scholarship or with other reasons, mm -hmm. and if you didn't know anyone here, it will be a bit Definitely. challenging, you know, yeah, it will take time for you to get something else. And actually, if you try, try to connect when you are back home yeah. before you, you move. Uh, it's good to have someone who can give you some information. And the other thing is just to try to get connected with some uh, groups or communities. Mm -hmm. I think I can see, for example, here, uh, even now we have this Ethiopian community. You know, if you can search in Facebook or something, you can find you can that find one it. information. So, and or with the school, or like it's better if you ask some information than just uh, try to figure out something by yourself. By yourself, yeah. 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 Ask. Ask for help. Ask for help. Yeah, and then, of course. At least you always get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Bible says that yeah. that knock, you'll be open. It shall be open to you. Yeah, ask right. and you shall be. <laughs> of course, yeah. Ask. Yeah. Yeah, asking for help, it's not like, you know, you're not just feeling weak or something, which is as if we didn't know anything about that. It's a new country, a new environment, a new culture, which is really totally different. Totally different. Yeah, so if you ask, and I think there are a lot of people who are helpful. I have a lot of friends from day one that help me, that makes my life easier. So I was asking if I found somebody, I would just ask the contact number, I would save it, and I would call day and night to ask each and everything. So yeah, that makes my life really easier, I can't, I can't say so. Yeah, and that's good unless you were able to integrate. That's why you were able yeah. to integrate uh, like so fast and also the scholarship scheme also did help you a lot. Yeah, it did make Yeah, so life. with someone who is coming here as an expert or who is moving here to work, definitely it would be nice that the person look for a community or look, look for someone who ha is already here to yeah. give you more information aside what he or she will read yeah. on the internet. But at least you also need some kind of first hand information, someone who lives here exactly. to give you some kind of uh, yeah, information uh, is the key, you know. Okay. Yeah. And thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank I'm you, Hello, it's my pleasure yeah. for yeah. having me. Yeah, and so we can see it, uh, Mary is wearing like a typical Ethiopian uh, traditional dress. Oh. Uh, yes, not typical but <laughs> traditional dress. Tra traditional <laughs> yeah. dress. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, we will be ending our interview here and I will uh, urge each and everyone who watched this video to try to subscribe to our channel. We will bring you several interviews with several experts who live here as well as uh, some African community or African expert who lives here and then they'll be telling you their side of the story. At least all of us will be taking inspiration from it. And thank you so much for your time.